Whether it's by smoking, curing, or salting, humans have been preserving meat since ancient times, long before the invention of the refrigerator, in order to make them tastier and to preserve their safety. Even today, with refrigeration commonly available, consumers continue to enjoy the good taste, nutrition, and longer shelf life that cured and processed meats offer. But what exactly are cured and processed meats? In food preparation, curing refers to various preservation, smoking, and flavoring processes that add a combination of salt, sodium nitrite, sugar, or other seasonings. Curing meats with sodium nitrite helps prevent growth of harmful bacteria and also gives cured meat its characteristic color and flavor. Cured meats you might commonly find in the supermarket include ham, lunch meats, corned beef, bacon, smoked sausage, and hot dogs. Some meat products like fresh sausage contain seasonings but don't contain sodium nitrite. These products have shorter shelf lives and must be cooked thoroughly before they're consumed. These fall into the broader category of processed meats. In recent years, those who advocate drastic reductions in meat consumption have worked to demonize the word processed. The act of processing food, though, is essential and is what makes food enjoyable in many cases. A common myth is that all processed meats are high in fat, calories, and sodium. But truth is that processed meats come in many forms, including low-fat, lean, low-sodium, and fat-free. One popular brand of packaged deli-sliced honey ham, for example, is 70 calories per serving, 2 grams of fat, and 11 grams of protein. A serving of 2% milk contains 120 calories, 5 grams of fat, and 8 grams of protein. Some groups have even alleged that eating cured and processed meats increase the risk of cancer. But a careful review of the science shows that processed meats broadly, and nitrite cured meats in particular, can be a healthy and safe part of a balanced diet. In 2000, the U.S. National Toxicology Program completed a multi-year study in which rats and mice were fed high levels of nitrite. Not only did nitrite not cause cancer, it actually prevented some forms of cancer in these animals. More recently, in 2004, Harvard University completed the largest study ever done of its kind on 725,000 humans and found no connection between red or processed meat and colon cancer. Despite its size and important findings, the study has received very little attention. Since then, even more studies have echoed the 2004 Harvard findings. Dr. David Klerfeld is the National Program Leader in Human Nutrition at the USDA's Agricultural Research Service. For me, the take-home message related to meat and cancer is you can still enjoy essentially any type of meat in moderate amounts and not worry at all about a theoretical risk of cancer. Few people realize that less than 5% of daily nitrite intake comes from cured meats. Nearly 93% of human nitrite intake comes from vegetables like spinach and lettuce and from our own saliva. Dr. Nathan Bryan of the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston explains. Because there's a conversion within our body that takes nitrate, it's primarily found in green leafy vegetables, reduces it to nitrite, then that's our number one source of nitrite. While few consumers understand where nitrite comes from, even fewer are aware of the emerging science which shows that nitrite actually offers health benefits. Research from the National Institutes of Health and the University of Texas has shown that not only is nitrite safe at the levels consumed in our diets, it performs important health benefits. Nitrite can prevent injury from a heart attack, control blood pressure, promote wound healing, help treat sickle cell anemia, and may even prevent disease progression. Dr. Bryan is one of the leading researchers in this field. If you look at the emerging health benefits of nitrite, uh, then we have to start the dialogue of a risk versus reward uh, type of situation. And I think the, um, the cardiovascular health benefits of nitrite, particularly at these doses that you can assume from simple changes in dietary habits, uh, outweigh the, the risk uh, by far. So while the negative media coverage about processed and nitrite-cured meats, 
Dr. Klerfeld offers his theory as to why. I don't think this, the media intentionally misleads the public, but I think they're led down the wrong path by the scientists publicizing their own research. And part of the problem for the media is that very often single reports are not put in context of the total body of literature. In today's hectic lifestyle, coupled with tight economic times, ready-to-eat foods and other modern advances of prepared meals offer convenience, value, and good nutrition. Whole, fresh foods, which include the recommended daily servings of fresh fruits and vegetables, are an important part of a balanced diet. So is protein. Served in the context of a well-balanced diet, processed and cured meats can be part of a healthy family menu. And remember, the U.S. Dietary Guidelines recommend eating 5.5 ounces of meat per day as part of a healthy diet. So whether it's a slice of bacon at breakfast, a ham sandwich in the school cafeteria, or hot dog at the ball game, consumers should enjoy cured and processed meats as part of their total diet. <laughs>